I keep seeing comments about how using a marking knife with an aluminum square will completely destroy the blade on it and it'll be useless and I'll be crying because I wasted all my money. What's going on guys? I'm Jody. This is Inspire Woodcraft. Uh, several videos back I talked about upgrading from these inexpensive box store tools, but a lot of it had to do with these squares to a woodpecker square. Now, a lot of people have said that the square is gonna work just great until I go to use a marking knife on it. So I wanted to set up an experiment. After about a thousand cuts, what is the tool gonna look like? So we start new and then we go to old and let's just see what happens. Is it going to destroy my square? Now what's funny is I tried to do some research about this ahead of time so that I didn't purposely, possibly destroy my own tools, but there's really not a lot of things to be found online other than people kind of just repeating themselves over and over. There's no one that says, I had a square just like that and I destroyed it because I used a marking knife on it. At least I can't find it. I know the internet is a big place, but I could not find it. That being said, what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna use this piece of walnut. I'm gonna use Woodpecker's 851 Tri-Square and I'm gonna use the Havilon Forge. Now, I've talked about this knife in the past, so I'm not gonna go into great detail about it, but I will say this is my everyday carry knife that I also use as a marking knife. It is not a traditional marking knife, but what is? There's so many different types of knives on the market that it's hard to say that one is more traditional than the other. And there's some pretty well-known woodworkers who use regular folding pocket knives as their marking knife. So this thing works extremely well. Now what I did is I made three passes and this is pretty typical of what I normally do unless maybe I'm working with pine, which is much softer. The first pass is just enough to slightly sever the fibers and get me a line started. If I was to do it all deep in one pass, then I run the risk of my knife wandering off on the grain, and I also run the risk of it jumping ship and riding up on top of the roll and slicing a finger open, which I don't think anybody wants. So the second pass actually opens that up a little bit farther. This third pass does the same thing. But again, that light first pass allows a track for those other deeper passes to go into. Now I did a total of 350 lines on this board and I did each one three times. So it's over a thousand passes along the edge of this rule to see what would happen to it. Now, as you can see, it did actually remove material. Of course, it takes a little while to get through the anodized coating on the surface. And then after that, I believe it did start eating away a little bit of the aluminum too. Keep in mind, that's a lot of cutting on this thing. Now, I'm not trying to convince anybody that this tool will hold up to a marking knife or anything. That's not what I'm gonna say at all. What I'm trying to say is basically for all the other people who are maybe now on the fence because they read a comment and somebody said, oh, you can't use that stuff because if you ever touch it with a knife, it's gonna just completely explode and your life will be ruined. That's not necessarily the case. If you use a knife occasionally, like I do, I think you're gonna be just fine. If you use a knife all the time, you might wanna get something with a stainless steel blade so that you don't have to worry about it anymore. So then you have a harder metal and a harder metal kind of working together instead of a hard and a soft, not playing very nicely with each other. Now, keep in mind that that shot was also super zoomed in. In fact, that's so far zoomed in that I can't actually get that close with my own eyes to see the amount of damage that was done. When you pull back and actually look at it, you really can't tell. In fact, I used just a regular shot of this for the thumbnail and you really can't tell that anything's wrong with it. And you may not even be able to tell unless I actually showed you. So there's very, very little material worked off of here. Like I said, if you're going to use a marking knife all the time, I do suggest getting a stainless steel blade because it just makes sense. However, if you use a knife on these once in a while, it's not going to hurt the tool that much. It's not gonna kill you. I will say, like I've said before, know your tools. Learn how to use the knife that you're going to use for marking. Because if you don't know how to use a knife already, probably don't start with something like this. Probably get a lesser expensive tool like one of these or almost anything. Don't try to learn how to use a marking knife on a, I don't know how much these are, but don't try and use it on an expensive tool. Try and use it on a less expensive tool. If you gouge it, if you nick it, you're gonna be much better off than if you were to obviously tear up an expensive tool right away. I've heard that people have a hard time learning how to use a marking knife, which is why I'm saying that. So all this is basically just food for thought. If you have anything to add, hopefully positive, because there's been some knuckleheads in the comments lately, but um, feel free to add something, share with the community. That way we can all come learn. Anyways, 
that's it for me. Thank you so much for watching this video, as always. We'll see you guys in the next one.